allow me to introduce myself. DJ Envy, Angela Yee, and Charlemagne the God. Well, y'all done came a long way. I think that y'all have a certain amount of respect for, you know, what everybody else does. And y'all are just the best at what y'all do. This platform, the reach y'all have that you've earned, makes space for somebody like me. You guys have a direct line to the culture. Oh, my God. Charlemagne and DJ Envy? Damn. Yes, you are. All I do is read about the Breakfast Club. Really? Every morning, That's good. you guys are trending. Every, uh, you know, I drag my ass out of bed. I'm like, uh, what happened on the Breakfast Club today? Get, get your ass up. Good morning, USA. Hey, yo, 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 Good All morning, right. Angela Yee. Y'all got to finish with that last year kind of phase out. It, sounds it does fake. fade out. It sounds it fake. Fade out. The yeah, end, because it'd be like, you know. It'd be like, you. We should put some reverb on it, though. Put some reverb on it. Make it sound now like. Now you want to echo. Now you want to enhance yeah, it. Yeah, like yo, 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 mixtape yo, yo. DJs. Oh, yo, 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 yo. How about come a minute earlier so we ain't got to play that? Oh, that's a good solution. <laughs> you don't have his headphones on yet? Nope. But yes, that is a great solution. <laughs> All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Good it's morning. Tuesday. How y'all feeling out there? Blessed, black, and highly favored. Yeah, I feel good. I feel good. I was filming some stuff for Essence uh, yesterday. You know, the Essence Music Festival is coming up. Mm -hmm. Essence Festival um, in New Orleans. It's their first time doing this in person uh, since the pandemic started. It's going to be a huge year this year, so I'm really excited. They actually have a men's experience this year for the first time. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually going down there for the uh, men's experience with Shea Moisture. So mm -hmm. I'll be down at Essence. I'm excited about that. Me and the wife will be out there. We'll be out there with some books. So uh, shout out to Essence. I'm really excited about heading out there. We Like you said, it, it's been... It, it hasn't been in person for the last, what, two years, three years? So yeah. super duper excited about that. All I want is some warm weather, okay? Hey, I don't know how it is anywhere else, but in uh, the, the tri-state area, New York, New Jersey, where we broadcast out of the Breakfast Club, we still got on hoodies it's and It's going to be 72 degrees today. It was like 74 yesterday. It was nice. My, my kids I'm not going to call it nice. It's just it in the softball. morning. It's it very nice. cold yeah. everywhere. We I was on that field go, all night. And it warms up. We wanted to go run outside yesterday and couldn't even go run outside. It was nice out. It was nice. I right? was out all day yesterday. Games. Well, y'all must live in a different world than me then. Yeah, we must. Yeah, because <laughs> I didn't feel the niceness. I didn't even see where it says it's going to be 70 today. I looked at yeah. the temperature and it says it's going to be 50-something degrees all day long. No, no it's 70 not. degrees. 70 degrees yesterday was 74. Like I said, my daughter had softball, a game that ended like 830. And we was on that field late. Yeah, today's so high is 70. Tomorrow, 72. Thursday, 70. 70? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll take well, it. I guess. Since we don't All have right. anything else, <laughs> we don't have, it's not like we in Florida or Texas. So, well, yes, yeah, so I'll take it. Jalen Rose will be joining us this morning. My guy, Jalen Rose, man. Yes, indeed. He's we got love a new Jaylen initiative Rose. that he's uh, doing around HIV AIDS awareness. So, what's mm -hmm. it called? I don't remember. You, me, you me, me, you, 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 me, and him, or me, like and him. You and me, me, and me, and you, or something like that, right? You I don't. Me, I thought, me, you asked me like I. Like, I don't know. Because you started talking about it. You said I just you said the initiative. initiative. That's why I didn't say the name. <laughs> I said the initiative. That's exactly why I didn't say the name. Okay, I didn't even right. attempt it. And also shout to Ross Baraka. He is the mayor of Newark. Today he'll oh, be joining man. us this morning. Uh, Elections Day is today in New Jersey. So go out there and vote. And also. Uh, Dupree Kelly. Dupre, uh, you're going to say his name Kelly. right. My bad. Dupre Kelly. You know him. Do it all. He's uh, from the Lords of the Underground. He's running for, uh, what you want, Fifth Ward, I think it is, or what ward? <laughs> West you know Ward. What ward? The West, West Ward of North West ward New, Jersey. New Jersey. So we're going to be talking to him. I love to see when uh, people from our industry jump into politics. I love it so much. So we're going to be talking to him as well. All right. Jalen Rose's the HIV campaign is called Me and You, You and Me. There you go. All right. Let's get the show cracking. Front page news, what are we talking about? Well, remember we were talking about this Alabama corrections officer, Vicki White, and the inmate Casey White, no relation, uh, but how he had escaped and they didn't know if she was being held hostage or if she was part of the whole plot. Mm -hmm. And this was in Alabama. Well, they uh, have been recovered and we'll tell you what happened, but she actually has already passed away. Oh boy. All right. We'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Now, the Celtics beat the Bucks yesterday, 116-108. Uh, the Warriors beat the Grizzlies, 101-98. Did you see any of those games? I did. I watched both of them, actually. Well, not uh, the full Warriors-Grizzlies game, but I watched the full Celtics-Bucks game. 
Watch the halftime of the uh, Warriors Grizzlies game. Mm, well, uh, the Celtics uh, tied it up 2 2, and the Warriors are leading 3 1. Al Horsefoot, man. Dropping the clues bonds for Old Man Al. <laughs> old Man Al was out there balling uh, yesterday for the Celtics. And John Moran didn't play. No, nah, he didn't play yesterday. And the MVP. Hello. Y'all going to talk about that? Well, I thought we did that uh, yesterday. We did that yesterday. Oh, we did? I mm-hmm. thought it happened after. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh. All right. All right. Well, former mm-hmm. Alabama corrections officer Vicki White has died from injuries after she and escaped inmate Casey White were arrested in Indiana. This all happened yesterday. Uh, it was an 11 day uh, manhunt that gained widespread national attention. There were hundreds of tips that flooded in from all corners of the country. Now, she did help him escape. If you guys recall, we discussed this on the air previously. And here's what law enforcement officers had to say. Uh, Casey White and Vicki White are in custody. Uh, there was a pursuit uh, this afternoon in Evansville, Indiana. Uh, Evansville, Indiana is about 219 miles from here. Uh, the U.S. Marshals were in pursuit of a black uh, Ford pickup. I think it was a F Ford 150. Um, and uh, Casey White was driving that vehicle. Uh, Vicki White was a passenger. Uh, as during the pursuit, the pickup truck wrecked. Uh, Casey White surrendered. Vicki White has been transported to the hospital. Uh, what I'm very thankful for tonight is that no one was hit, hurt. Uh, no citizens were hurt. No law enforcement officers were hurt uh, as a result of this escape. Now, before the chase, officers did conduct surveillance and they spotted Vicki White exiting a hotel with a wig on. That's when she and Casey White got into a car and drove away. She then, uh, according to authorities and according to Casey White, he told officers to help his wife who had shot herself in the head. He said he didn't do it. So according to authorities, though, Casey White and Vicki White are not married. And unfortunately for her, she did (laughs) die from her injuries before she died. She was facing new forgery and identity theft charges in in Alabama, in addition to the charge of permitting or facilitating escape in the first degree that was filed last week. Wow. Yes. They said most times uh, when people escape from a county jail, it's spontaneous. But this escape was obviously well planned and calculated. A lot of preparation went into this. They had plenty of resources. They had cash. They had vehicles, everything they needed to pull this off. And that's what they said made this last week and a half so challenging. They said we were starting from ground zero. And not only that, we started. They had a six hour head start on us. All right. That is your front page news. All right. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up right now. Maybe you had a bad morning, bad night. Or maybe you feel blessed and you want to spread some positivity. Whatever it may be. 800-585-1051. Hit us up right now. Get it off your chest. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're mad or blessed. So you better have the same energy. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Peace, peace. It's Finesse coming out the Bronx. Finesse. Finesse, what up? what's happening, King? Yo, 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 um, Charlamagne, I want to have a personal question for you, bro. Yes, Are sir. Are you part of the nation of gods on earth? No, but I used to study 5% teachings. I love okay. I love, I love, love the teachings of the NOI and the 5% teachings, okay. though. Okay, that's peace, that's peace. I always want to know and ask you that. But, yo, I've got a question for all y'all. Can I recite a poem real fast? Of course. Sure. All right, bet. So here it goes. How can a four-letter word be so powerful, but still changeable, remainable, naked to the human eye between you and I? They say love is blind. I can't manifest it, so why try? I still seek and crave for that emotion and control my mind. Deep inside, my heart makes the time. My body goes to the pain and aches from the love we make, but at the end of the day, I'm scared. My heart would get bruised, even break, recheated or misplaced. I need a better mind state from the situation we face, but wait. How can a four-letter word be so blinding, but still perfect time to the ones that have time to find it? Time is of the essence, somewhat second-guessing, requesting each minute by a couple of seconds. Peace. Okay, okay, right, okay. Got Thank you, brother. He got in and out. I mean, in and out. I got a book coming out called 49. I mean, and I'm just, I mean, I appreciate the time I spend on this radio station. That's, that's real loud. Why is it called Thank 49? You, 49, because that's really, that's, 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 that's my heartfelt. You know, my, my, my first sister was born on the 4th. My mother was born on the ninth. I lost two of my cousins, Dante and Ian. Rest in peace. It just the anniversary just came up on um, May fourth. I'm just really everywhere right now. Get emotional for that. But um, gotcha. my cousin, you know, you know, we deal with mathematics. So his name was Ian. Ian. Ian is the um, the ninth letter in the alphabet, and D is the fourth letter in the alphabet. So four and nine is a real, you know. And then if you add four and nine together, that's thirteen. 
So one and three is four. So you know, I was I'm just real like strong on four okay. and nine. So all right, brother. I, Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. I'm dialing. I'm dialing. Hey, what you doing, man? I'm dialing. I'm calling call you. This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're mad or blessed. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The <laughs> Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Hey, good morning, everyone. Peace and blessings. Angela. Oh, my gosh. Hey. Sean Stone, what up? What's up, Sean what? Stone? I'm good, Angela. What's up, DJ Envy? Congratulations on your book, man. Shout Thank out you, to sir. Your wife. Thank you so much. Angela, congratulations on everything you're doing, man. Good Thank life. you. I appreciate it. I know he over there. He ain't going to say nothing, but it's all good. You didn't even it's say all hello good. to him. Uh-huh. You didn't speak to him. You spoke to everybody him? but him. Yeah, sometimes we be but, what, man, what is you talking oh about, Sean? Sean, you got some other stuff going on. Peace <laughs> King, how are you, sir? What's the other wrong with you? Gotta know they beefing with you, bro. I, these guys be projecting their pain on on projecting uh, their pain nah, on man, me. I don't got no pain, man. I don't got no pain to project. I'm just messing with you, Charlie. Man, I don't got no beef with you, my brother. How are you, black man? Man, I'm so blessed, man. You know, I'm highly blessed and highly favored, man. You know. Yes, sir. One little beef I got with you, though, Sean. Uh huh. Is beef. It is, uh, you know, when you be uh, posting uh, spiritual leaders, right? None of your spiritual leaders didn't tell you about Easter eggs and bunnies. That is not even correct. Now what the hell is you talking about? Yeah, you were celebrating Easter. With, uh, you went to Easter every day. I was not celebrating was Easter. About. What are you talking about? I don't celebrate no damn Easter. I grew up Jehovah Witness. Man, you were celebrating Easter with Easter eggs and bunnies. What you kids? Man, what is you talking about? My wife put out some Easter eggs. That ain't got nothing to do with spirituality. That is just... Uh, what I'm saying is the correct thing for you to celebrate is just Resurrection Day. And tell your kids about Resurrection Day and about what Christ did for us. You know what I mean? But I ain't knocking what you do, period. I'm just saying. Okay. Sound like you're knocking what I do, but it's Don't just... Don't be putting out no damn Easter eggs, eggs, man. You put out them like damn Easter just, eggs. You give them all the smoke. Yeah, no Easter, Easter eggs. Easter eggs don't have nothing to do with nothing. It's just a, a, a fun tradition to do on Easter. Well, you have a good morning, sir. Hello, who's this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your boy, Andre. I'm from Brooklyn, but you already know I live out here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. You already know. Yeah, I just I just wanted to say, like, y'all be doing y'all thing, you know what I mean? I've been um, listening to y'all for a very long time. I'm actually young. I'm like 28 years old, but... I'm talking about y'all. We always hear since middle school days, type year. That's what I hear. I hear that when I'm out. When I'm out and about, people say that. Been listening to you since middle school. We've been around a long time. You already know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, but like to be honest, I'm not happy. You feel me? I'm not happy. You know what I mean? What's wrong, I feel like King? I'm supposed to be doing. I'm, I feel like I'm supposed to be doing way more than I am doing. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people used to look up to me, but I feel like. They surpassed me, so they, they don't even like look my way no more. You dig? So you saying you like, damn, do? homie, in high school you was the man, homie? What the f happened to you? Me. That's yeah. what you saying. You want to do? Like some Cassidy type shit. That was fifty. Cassidy. But what you? That was fifty. But what you want to do, bro? What you want to do with life? Well, I actually want to be a musician. You feel me? I want to be a singer, a rapper. You feel me? A magician? You said? Like, no, a musician. Ye. Oh, I thought yeah, you said like, a magician. Like a I thought you like said magician artist. too. I'm not gonna lie. My, my fault. My fault. Like an artist. You heard? Okay. Can we hear something you heard? Huh? Can we hear something? Let me ask you a question, though. Serious question. Do you want to be an artist because you actually want to be an artist or just because you see it working for other people? Nah, I really I really want to be an artist. Bro. You rap? Let's hear something. What? I, I like kind of sing, you yeah. oh. Okay, let's, let's go. Let's hear it. Lord yeah. have mercy. All right. I've been gone for a minute, now I'm back now. No, you can't on a n like the last time. You heard? Yeah, I had to get it back in the background. Hold on, what you said? Keep going, keep going. She keep said you all right, good. I be counting on a n for the last time. Yeah, I had it in a bag, in a bad room. Now you see a n who wants to come on now. Hold up, hold up. I kind of messed up, but... I yeah. know. We know. <laughs> We're fully aware. <laughs> well, keep trying, brother, right, man. You have a good morning, all right? All right. All right. He sounds sure? like a great magician. You already know. <laughs> yeah, he might need to be a magician. Magician is a dope field, though. A lot of people don't go down that path. He might try to try ma magician. I don't know. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. We got rumors on the way? Yes, and man, this was huge news yesterday, so let's start with this. Young Thug and Gunna, what is going on? Whoa. All right, we'll get into that next. The, the culture. Breakfast Club. Good morning. Listen up. It's just the end. All the guys. Gossip. Gossip. The Rumor Report. Gossip. Gossip. With Angela. Angela Green. It's the Rumor Report. The Breakfast Club.
Man, I did not see this coming. Young Thug and Gunna are among 28 people associated with YSL, that's their Young Stoner Life, that have been charged in a 56-count indictment yesterday. Now, Young Thug was taken into custody after the home that he was at was raided. He's being held at Fulton County Jail. He's been charged with RICO and participation in criminal street gang activity, according to jail records. Here is the DA speaking on what's going on. We expect that in coming days, weeks, and months that we will bring RICO indictments against gang members, even top-level gang members, to make sure that we rid them from our society. Now, according to Michael Seiden from WSB TV, he was on Twitter breaking down everything that was happening. They did have some breaking news. Uh, they said the indictment includes, included charges of conspiring to violate the racketeer influence and corrupt organizations. That's RICO Act. Murder, armed robbery, participation in criminal street gang activity. They said Young Thug is facing charges of, of that and Gunna is facing one count of con, uh, conspiring to violate RICO. It's an 88-page indictment that Michael Seiden did review. He said there's some very serious allegations against Young Thug. According to prosecutors, YSL is a criminal street gang that started in late 2012 in the clear Cleveland Avenue area of ATL, YSL claims affiliation with the National Bloods Gang. Now here is Young Thug's attorney speaking on his innocence. I'll tell you the response to any allegation is Mr. Williams committed no crime whatsoever and we will fight to my last drop of blood to clear him. Young Thug is accused of renting a 2014 Infiniti Q50 sedan from Hertz, which was used in the commission of the murder of Donovan Thomas Jr., a rival gang member, according to the indictment. Prosecutors allege that two associates of YSL worked to get permission of Young Thug to make a second attempt to murder YFN Lucci while he's jailed in Fulton County. So these are some of the allegations. And he, like I said, he was booked on charges of RICO. So Young Thug, they do have his mugshot and everything. And Gunner too, right? Uh, they said as of last night, he hadn't been booked into jail. I don't know about this morning. Oh, I thought he was named in the indictment. He was well. named, but oh. he, he, uh, he hasn't been booked yet. We said that he was um, named as well. Yeah, I really hate seeing things like this. Uh, young black men with the opportunities these brothers have should not have their names anywhere near this kind of situation. Like, like this ain't it, y'all. And I don't know what's true and what's not true, but I know this situation is about to cost those brothers a lot of money and they a lot of stress. Now, Young Thug is scheduled to make his first court appearance this morning at 11.30. But according to Michael Seiden, he said, I wouldn't be surprised if he waived his first appearance. Mm. And they're saying these alleged crimes took place from January of 2013 to May of 2022, according to this 88-page indictment. Now, let's see if 300 is going to uh, stand by them. Because, you know, these artists make music based off the same things that those brothers got picked up for. And these labels make money based off the same things those brothers got picked up for. A lot of people make money, you know, marketing that lifestyle. So let's see what happens now that things are real and not just records. But if you recall, that's why YF and Lucy was trying to, to get released to be on house arrest because there were attempts of his life while he was in jail. And then, you know, just recently, Young Thug, one of um, the the mother of one of his children was killed, too, uh, just recently. So we don't know if anything is connected or not or if it was really a fight in a bowling alley. All right. Now, Black China's mom, Tokyo Tony, is telling TMZ that they have a new show on the way. Here's what she had to say. Would you guys want to maybe do another, like a reality show? We are going to do one on my network. Oh, really? It's called the SHN Network, yes. Oh, wow. It's called Talking with Tokyo. Talking with Tokyo. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what well, is it, like a talk show? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it, will Black China be on Me it? and Black China. You and Black China. Interviewing people? Everyday people, celebrities, you, TMZ, okay. bloggers. Come on that stage and sit down and let's talk. That sounds interesting. This is just the network with the show that me and her are on. Two chairs and a sofa for whomever to get comfortable and talk to. Where's the network located? I'm not sure. Mm. She did not say, but she did say they're going to have these sit downs. All right. And another uh, entrepreneurship situation, T-Pain. He is celebrating becoming a restaurant owner. He made his announcement on social media. He said, I did it, boys. I'm officially a restaurant owner. Got my keys today, and I'm scared as ish. But I can no longer ignore the paths God has set for me just because I don't understand or I'm scared. I've learned that if I'm not afraid, that means I'm in my comfort zone. That may be what some people want. But as comfortable as it is in there, it also gets effing boring in this new chapter of my life. I'm taking the leap on anything I truly love and believe in. He said, I don't have to ask for permission to believe in myself anymore. So he shared a photo of his father and mother standing in front of their first restaurant, Fish and Deep Pocket. Fish and Deep Pocket? Fish and Deep Pocket. Okay, yes. dropping a clues boss with T Pain, man.
That's what I like to hear. So that's their first restaurant with his mom and dad. He said, I grew up in this place. I know the risk. I know how stressful it is. I know the success rate. Thank you, everybody, for your support, kind words, encouragement. And though it may not seem like it, I also appreciate the concern. But please don't project your own fears onto me. You know, people will tell you how hard it is to open a restaurant. And I'm sure that's what he's he's referring to. Yeah, and it is. But guess what? That's life. You know what I mean? And I salute that man uh, for taking that, that kind of risk. That's the kind of risk people should take. If you want to take a risk, take that kind of risk. Not a risk that's going to end you up in the penitentiary. All right, now, Anthony Anderson, congratulations to him. He has officially graduated from Howard University, and he shared that he graduated over the weekend. On Sunday, he put in some videos and photos from his graduation. He said his degree was 30 years in the making. That's what I'm talking about. I'm going to clue mom for Anthony Anderson. See, now I like how this rumor report went. Okay. I try to balance it. That's what I'm saying. Some positivity. He started off like, damn, man, I hate to see them brothers in that situation. And that's how I like to see brothers opening restaurants, getting their degrees, dropping a clues bomb for Anthony Anderson. Well, here's Anthony Anderson. Ain't you? You know? <laughs> it's about time. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. You know, it's one thing to graduate from Howard University. Mm-hmm. It's another thing to do it with your son some 33 years later. So how does it feel, Anthony? Uh, you know, words can't begin to describe how I'm feeling right now. I, I didn't know it would be uh, as a, I, I didn't know I would be as emotional as I am. Uh, you know, this was supposed to happen back in 1992. Here we are, 2022. Uh, so uh, everything is coming full circle the way it's supposed to. What I respect about that the most, um, Anthony Anderson was here on the Breakfast Club, and he told us that what he, that's what he was going to do. It was like three, four years ago. I don't know if his son had just got enrolled in the Howard. I don't know what it was, but he said his dream is to graduate uh, with his son, and he did that. So salute to Anthony Anderson. Love to see it. He said that here on the Breakfast Club. I don't know. I think it might have been like three years ago, four years ago. All right. Well, he did that, and that is your rumor report. Mm-hmm. Coming up next, we got front page news. What we got, Yee? Yes, uh, Joe Biden announced yesterday uh, 20 broadband providers have agreed to lower costs and increase speeds for low-income people across the country. We'll give you more information. All right. It's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Angela Yee here for my friends at the General Insurance. Switch to the General and you could save over $500 on your car insurance. Call 800-GENERAL or visit thegeneral.com to find out more. The General Auto Insurance Services, Inc., an insurance agency in Nashville, Tennessee. Some restrictions apply. Of- yep, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Angela Yee is front page news. I don't have nothing in front of me. I just know that the Warriors <laughs> won last night. And I know that uh, the Celtics won last night. So the celtics Bucks series is tied 2-2. Warriors are up 3-1. Uh, on the Grizzlies. What we got, Yee? All right. Well, let's talk about Joe Biden. He announced yesterday that 20 broadband providers have agreed to lower costs and increase speeds, and that is for low-income people across the country. Here's what he said. High-speed Internet is not a luxury any longer. It's a necessity. That's Mm -hmm. why in November, when we passed the Bipartisan Infrastructure Bill, we also created something called the Affordable Connectivity Program. If your household income is twice the federal poverty level or less... That's about $55,000 per year for a family of four, or $27,000 for an individual. Or a member of your household is on Medicaid or Supplemental Security Income. And if if you qualify, you're going to get a $30 credit per month. We we secured commitments from 20 providers, most of them in the garden today, going to lower prices for high-speed internet for tens of millions of households. Now, to help people sign up, the administration is launching a website for applications and directing agencies that run the qualifying government programs to contact recipients to inform them about their eligibility. So there are certain states, Arizona, Michigan, Massachusetts, New York, uh, Philly, they plan to text millions of people in eligible households as well. Yeah, I mean, that's a big deal, especially in areas uh, I'm from, like rural areas in South Carolina. A lot of people don't have access to Internet. You know, think about how many kids are behind because during COVID, they couldn't even do their work from home because they didn't have internet. Got to go to Starbucks and Taco Bell, you know, just to get Wi-Fi to do their homework. So that's a big deal. Mm-hmm. All right. Now let's talk about an, MMM, an MMA fighter, Joel Bauman. He uh, gave an interview after his fight that went viral because on the mic, he was super honest. Last fight, I was tired. I was exhausted. I'm about to launch this NFT that's going to change the fight game. And I put in 30 all-nighters before that fight. I had herpes before that fight, two outbreaks in the span of a week. I'm here. I'm healthy. Let's go. Whatever. It doesn't matter. I'll fight. Now, salute to all our listeners out there with herpes. 
Um, does herpes make you tired? I don't know. I didn't know that, but apparently, I mean, for him, or maybe it was just stressful having those mm-hmm. two outbreaks. I would like to know. I know we got a lot of listeners with herpes. I'm sure there's people up here in this building right now with herpes. We could look it up. I just want to know. Does herpes make symptoms. you tired? Is fatigue like a side effect of herpes? I have no idea. Herpes. What do they say? Like one in three people got herpes, right? Anybody in this room got herpes? Be honest. Herpes Nobody? Nobody. Anybody up here got herpes? Want to come on the microphone and talk to us? Tell us about fatigue? Okay, so huh? we see these uh, sores, the blisters. I know about those. I never heard about fatigue being Pain a side itching, effect of herpes. Tenderness. No fatigue? But you know what? It could have just been stressful. I mean, who knows? All right, so the first symptoms, pain or itching, small red bumps, okay. ulcers, scabs. I did not know that was a symptom. I don't think that has anything to do with fighting in the ring, unless somebody hits you below oh, the belt while you have Oh, it does say feeling achy and tired. Really? Yeah. And okay. flu-like symptoms. Okay. See? See, I didn't know. See? The Chills, more you know. fever, headaches, swollen okay. glands. Okay. And your throat. So those are some of the... Um, those are some of the symptoms. So everybody thinks that MMA fighter is bugging out by revealing that information, but that's actually yeah, uh, that made really him tired. yeah, that really made, made him, him tired. Have flu-like yeah. symptoms. Um, What's his name? Uh, Joel Bauman. Drop on the clues bombs for Joel Bauman. Salute to Joel Bauman for keeping it real. <laughs> okay. All right. And salute to all our listeners out there with herpes. You are appreciated. All right now. The world's most valuable cryptocurrency, we know what that is, Bitcoin, was down 10% Monday after plunging again over the weekend. Now, Bitcoin prices have plummeted nearly 20% in the last week. So other cryptocurrencies have been hit really hard, too. Ethereum, Binance, Solana, Cardano, they're all down about 15% in the past week, while Elon Musk's Dogecoin has tumbled 10%. So they're saying cryptocurrency is just as risky as stocks. Right now, and it's uh, susceptible to the same concerns that are dragging down the stock market as well. Volatile trading in digital assets has not been that unusual in previous years. Cryptocurrencies are increasingly moving in sync with tech stocks, with investors treating both as risk assets and often retreating to safer corners of the market during bouts of market volatility. So, but, but everybody knows those are risk assets, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They should know. Yeah, they should. Yeah, so... Uh, and it's, it is on par with what's happening in the stock market right now with inflation fears. People are worried about big interest rate hikes. And so now that has caused uh, bad news yeah. for cryptocurrency. Don't even look at your stocks right now. If you, if I you, haven't been. Don't even look I at I actually it. took a little quick peek yesterday and then I, I closed nope. it real fast. Especially if you got like a S&P 500. You know you ain't even supposed to be looking at that until uh, you know decades from now. So don't even look at it. I will say, they say to um, buy the dip. So while things are down, if you have a little extra cash. What if I ain't got no chip? It's not I'm a bad idea. Dip. Buy the dip and chip. Yeah, if I ain't got no chips, I'm about to dip. So if you were thinking about jumping into the stock market, if things seem lower than normal, that's when you really are supposed to buy. Okay. But that's just general advice, obviously, from somebody who's not a financial um, expert. But that is definitely advice that they give pretty much. Okay. All right. Well, that is your front page news. I forgot who we got coming in. Who we got coming in? Uh, damn, you really oh, Jalen Rose, my yeah. guy Jalen Rose, man. Jalen Rose will be here uh, to talk about his new HIV AIDS awareness initiative, plus, you know, NBA playoffs and all kind of other good stuff, man. So salute to Jalen Rose. He'll be here when we come back. It's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club. Envy, Angela Yee, and Charlemagne the God. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Our guy, yes, indeed. Jalen Rose. What up, though? Welcome How back. are you, my brother? I'm blessed. It's a family affair. As always, I want to make sure I start any interview I ever do with you guys by saluting each of you in your own right. Thank you. I'm really fortunate that I believe probably a couple of years older than each of you, but I got a chance in the multimedia to watch all of y'all come up together Word. and individually. And the most proud thing for me is when I do a show, New York Post, Renaissance Man, new episode each Thursday, I've had each of you on the show. Word. That's, Absolutely. Love. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. That's and you're all right. Each of you have been on the show, so I thank you guys very much. Absolutely. Thanks for having us anytime, Yeah, we thank man. you, too. I always say Jalen Rose is like, as far as for my career as a woman, you've been like one of the most respectful amazing people to me so I appreciate you for thank that you. from early on for me when I was at Sirius appreciate that and thank you for encouraging me to join Twitter I appreciate that <laughs> <laughs> now, now before we get into anything else have you heard the new Kendrick Lamar I heard it I didn't study it oh but, okay got you for those got that you, don't you. know what that means got like you, I've listened to it I was on the move I was using the phone I was jumping in and out got of you, stuff got you, got you. but I gotta sit with it so you didn't even see the video yet I ain't seen the oh, video yet either oh, you gotta see the video 
I can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait. Can't wait. Now let's start. Let's start NBA, man. A lot okay. going on in the NBA. First and foremost, who, who you think is gonna take it all? Let's start there. Wow, that's a tough question. It's literally wide open this year. Mm -hmm. I I want to say the Phoenix Suns. Even still, even after this weekend. Even okay. after this weekend, because I believe in CP3. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they've been the best team in basketball all year. And while they're struggling and he's struggling right now, Devin Booker was still balling yesterday. I think they'll find a way to advance against the Mavs. I know the Warriors, you know, new era run TMC almost mm -hmm. with the Splash Brothers mm -hmm. and Poole look crazy out there. But I think the defending champions of the Western Conference with CP and Book and Aiton and Bridges, they find a way to win the West. Right now, if Middleton comes back, I feel like the Bucks will have what it takes to win the East. Mm. I know on paper for especially East Coast bias and people to like, mm -hmm. you know, old school traditional NBA, watching the Bucks and the Suns probably is not the quote unquote attractive series Correct. everybody wants me to say, but I believe that's what it's gonna be. My my preseason pick was Golden State. So I'm sticking I ain't mad with at that. that. <laughs> I ain't mad at that. But the one thing I think the further they go, they drafted Wiseman because they need to be taller yeah, yeah, at yeah. some point. Mm -hmm. And Draymond does a great job, obviously, defensive player of the year candidate, holding down and being an anchor defensively. But you're going to need one more tall guy. Like, Kaminga mm -hmm. gave him great minutes. Yep. He's a rookie. He was balling in the uh, previous game, and I think he scored 18 points. But I think you're going to need another big guy to go against Aiton and JaVale McGee and Bismack Biombo mm -hmm. in the next series. Now, what happened with Brooklyn? <laughs> what happened with Brooklyn is you can't cheat the game. Mm. I think our who said that our guy Styles get married to the game but never have a kid with it. Mm. I think that's what I saw with them. And what I mean is talented on paper. Like when right. they first signed, like as you guys know, I work in New York during the post. So like right. I remember when they signed. Mm -hmm. And I was like everybody else, like this might be a reincarnation of what happened in Miami mm. right. when LeBron went down there. And then all of a sudden I see like KD was invested clearly because KD's just a beast. KD would play anywhere. Mm -hmm. But he got injured this year. And James Harden was looking at KD like, uh, 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 like I'm belly. He's like, that's your man. Like, y'all brought me here, <laughs> but he won't get vaccinated. Right, right, right. right. So, so what's up with your man? Right. And so James Harden, like, you know what? I don't want to play in Brooklyn no more. And he basically quit on the team. And yeah. you knew that he was going to leave, and you kept saying that. Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. And And the thing is, there was a game – where James Hart was like he couldn't play because his hand was hurt. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like he 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 was not invested. So you basically quit quit on the Rockets and you quit on the Nets and you get what you want, a chance to go to Philly. Mm -hmm. He finally played like it last night. Mm. Yeah. But where does that leave the Nets? I got a few questions. How did Ben Simmons pass a physical? Yeah, if he needs surgery now. Yeah, yeah. If he needs surgery, right? He ain't yeah. played basketball since last June. Yeah. If he ain't played basketball right. almost a year and I'm about to trade for you, I know he took a physical. Right. That's the first question yeah. I'll ask. The second thing is you got to do that deal in the offseason because you can't give James what he want out. No, you about to play with us this year. I'm bringing all three of them in the room. And, like, I know whatever, whatever. When the trade deadline pass, y'all playing one playoff together. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to see what happens because I haven't seen anything from Ben yet. Yeah. He said he has some emotional issues with mm -hmm. Philly and clearly he has some back issues with Philly. He took a back a, a toward all shot when he first got to the Nets. That's why I was trying to tell everyone that was saying he was being weak or he was being soft. I'm like, a basketball player ain't lining up to take a shot mm -hmm. in his back. Like something is really wrong with him. And so for me, if they would have did the deal in the offseason, you bring him in the building, you introduce him to your therapist, mm -hmm. you introduce him to the trainer, you get him used to New York City, and he has an offseason, he has a preseason, he has, and then he you have the best chance to get the best version of Ben Simmons. So I don't think really for the Nets, any of that worked out in their favor. Mm -hmm. And therefore the Nets in while they still have KD and Kyrie, they'll be a contender, but they won't be, like, the favorite. Why do you think Steve Nash doesn't get uh, the criticism I think he should get? Like, Steve Nash is a terrible coach. Because, so there, there are two different styles when you watch Boston and the Nets play. This this is why Boston bullied the Nets. Hmm. Because email, when, when Jalen Brown does a turnover or makes a mistake, Ime Udoka, Marcus Smart, whoever, they're up in his face. Like, dog, wh what's happening? Mm -hmm. When... When James Harden lets the ball walk, roll into the backcourt at Detroit and he doesn't bend over to pick it up, 
Like Steve Nash doesn't say anything to him. Mm. So why is that? Because you got to allow yourself to be coached. Mm. So this is the coach they wanted. Mm -hmm. So it don't even matter. Like is Kyrie, for example, going to allow himself to be coached? Mm. Mm. It was. It wasn't Steve Nash fault that he didn't get vaccinated. That was a personal choice. We all have a choice. But when you make that choice in a team sport, now all of a sudden you making us six seed, seven seed, eight seed. And KD get hurt, ninth seed, tenth seed, eleven seed. Now we got to play all of these minutes to try to fight to get back in the playoffs, and it was just too much to happen. So when they get an off season, mm -hmm. even if they don't have been, just having those two, they'll be one of the top teams in the East, and they'll 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 get closer to meeting expectation. But it is funny that they won the same amount of playoff games as the Knicks this year. That's a fact. Yeah. Do you do you that, that, think that, that they could win without a strong defense? No, no, no way. <laughs> No, ma'am, they can't. And no the Bucks will show you that. The Boston Celtics show you that. The Miami Heat show you that. Those are three teams. If you don't play D, you're not beating them. That's right. So, no, they, they, they're going to have to figure out what to do on the interior, get KD some help. They're thin up front. KD, obviously, is not you know built to be banging other bigs. Mm -hmm. And Claxton is a young big that could catch lots, but he's not you know, physically imposing. And Drummond doesn't really, you know, defend a pick and roll and block shots. So they will need to shore up some rim protection. All right. Well, we got more with Jalen Rose in minutes. Don't go anywhere. Keep it locked right there. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ MV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. Jalen Rose is in the building. Now, now let's talk about this uh, new campaign you got, a uh, new initiative, Me and You, You and Me. is an HIV prevention initiative. What, yes. What made you with, want to get involved with that? With, with Vive Healthcare. And when I was growing up as an ascendant athlete, my favorite player in my childhood idol Irvin Magic Johnson mm -hmm. contracted HIV mm -hmm. and I'll never forget that day going to practice writing Magic 32 on my shoes and it changed how I approached my sexual habits as a person a young person growing up and I started listening to songs like BDP Jimmy different mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. truly like mm -hmm. for those that lived that era mm -hmm. and, and you know what when, just just watching you say the name of the campaign me and you and you and me is actually one of the reasons why I wanted to get involved because if this was the 90s we'd be key keying and saying no homo mm -hmm. me and you you and me yeah 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 <laughs> right yeah, yeah. And, and, and so and so that oh yeah okay me <laughs> and you you <laughs> and me yeah, yeah. okay Right. Right. And so what ends up happening is that stops um blacks from having a conversation, that stops straight people from having a conversation. And women in particular, black, black women, women are 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 very uh, disproportionately affected mm -hmm. by this. Like one in forty eight black women will contract HIV. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not a lot. One in forty eight? Wow. Versus white women, I believe is one in eight hundred and eighty. Why? Why is it testing, prevention, mm -hmm. the conversation, Knowledge. and also people that are continued carriers that never get tested? Mm. You know, I ran into somebody over the weekend that actually worked on this campaign, and he was saying that it was really difficult to get bl uh, black men involved, and that was like one of the hardest things. They were so happy that you stepped up to the plate to to be involved. Absolutely. Black man, an athlete, I'm from the hood. I mm -hmm. talked about my childhood idol con contracting HIV. And these are just conversations we don't have that we need to have. And I was excited to not only, it, it was it was classy, it was tastefully done. And how they set it up is you, you do a phone conversation with somebody that you don't know. And they ask you a series of questions. And we did a couple of those phone conversations. And then you meet the person as you're about to do the shoot. So it's like I've talked to this person maybe an hour, two separate times, so now we're meeting for the first time. Mm -hmm. And that person was Tina Knowles. Wow. It sure was. Wow. And so for me, after talking to her a couple of times and I see the queen walking towards me, I'm like, yo, they did a great job of embodying <laughs> how black women are so very affected by this. Black men never discussed this and we're both public figures and like I know who she is mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. what I mean like I'm like as I was walking towards her I was just thinking about the genius in the campaign and how proud I was to be a part of it so, do you remember where you were when you first heard that Magic Johnson had contracted HIV I do I was at Chrysler Arena member of the Fab Five shout out to Ray Jimmy Chris and Juwan and we were about to I, I think we were on the practice floor 
and they pulled us all off practice. And they told us the news, like for for the youngsters, there was no internet, there was no YouTube mm-hmm. or whatever. We was like gathering around watching the press conference. Yeah, exactly. It's breaking news. Like, uh oh. And so when it happened, like I start crying because that was a time where we felt like it was a death sentence. that was yeah, a death, death sentence. Yeah. Yeah. And then we started to look at bleeding different, sex different, the physicality of the game different. And remember, there was a time when Magic was. Like Magic and Magic is from Michigan, and I'm a tall point guard, so that was my that's my idol. Like I call him the Hall of Fame mogul. That is my idol to mm-hmm. this day, and I'm from Detroit, so Isaiah Thomas and the Bad Boys are my team. And one of the my favorite All Star games is when Magic returned to play in that. Oh, game. that was yeah, fantastic! That was right? What? I got that card. Threes, that was amazing. And they, yeah, yeah. That, that's one of the that's one of the greatest <laughs> moments in the history of the NBA mm-hmm. because that's a hurdle that the NBA took first in sports mm-hmm. to embrace an athlete that had HIV when normally that person was ostracized. I believe around that time, before, or after. Easy E mm-hmm. um, c- contracted AIDS and then he died. And so that was a huge thing for our community. Yeah, the crazy thing was all the misconceptions, right? Because I remember my pops and my uncles, first thing they said was, well, you know Magic and Isaiah, they've been gay. Yes. That was one thing. And mm-hmm. then I remember Carl Malone saying, um, I'm not playing against him. What if he bleed on me? And that stuff right now sounds so ignorant, but at the time, we, we didn't, didn't have any information. No we didn't have yeah. any information. No and, and that's the part about... We thinking it's a death sentence, Charlemagne. It's like, oh my God, Magic got HIV. Is Magic gonna die? Mm-hmm. Like we were watching the All Star Game, thinking like, what is about to happen? Right. And w- like, literally, what is about mm-hmm. to like around this time? Like there was some 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 bizarre things happening in sports. It's like when Hank gathers. I remember he was playing and he and he collapsed and he died. So there were a lot of different things that were happening in sports. We were just watching and glued to the TV and just to see his big smile and to see him knocking down threes mm-hmm. and stuff like yeah. that, that gave us a, a different level of heightened awareness that we needed to move forward with. You know, to see Magic and what he's accomplished since then. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, just mm-hmm. think about what he's... Like, people talk about his five championships as a player, but he's been an executive for, like, four or five championships. He got a ring with the Dodgers. Everybody knows, like, the businessman and entrepreneur he's been, so... You're talking about him buying the Broncos, man. How about that? That is crazy. Yeah, so, so for me, when I look at blueprints for my life, it was always what Magic is doing or what Isaiah Thomas was doing. And then you also have the Jalen Rose Leadership Academy, of course, right, yes, for over you. a decade now. Mm-hmm. So how does this translate into what you think kids should be learning in school when it comes to HIV prevention? Thank you. Great question. Prevention is the key. Communications are the key. Obviously, we're not here to, you know, encourage young people to have irresponsible sex type of thing, but it does happen. It's kind of like the drinking or whatever else or drugs. You don't want young people. You're not encouraging them to do those things, but you understand if you're going to do those things, there has to be a level of responsibility and prevention and uh, respectability for yourself and for your partner and for our community. And so that's no different than educating them about math or science or STEM or anything mm-hmm. else. Like it's really important for us to have these conversations with our young people in our community and make sure that they have the courage to not only you know, accept the teaching, but also be carriers that they can teach other people and be more mm-hmm. responsible as they move forward. And I saw Queen Latifah, by the way, give a speech. She was ex- uh, she was getting an award from Variety, and she was representing the Jalen Rose Leadership Academy. That was so much love. And uh, shout to Shaq Kim, too. Man. Um, he's family. And Legends. so she was always a great leader and stuff like that. And for her to get uh, acknowledged by Variety and all of the things she can do in the world, that's Queen Latifah. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I'm happy that she know my name. Right. That she even knows about the school that I have. Like, sometimes I wear... Um, I have to do a better job of being an ambassador of the school and I have to stay encouraged myself mm. sometimes because you get 98% more no's than you get yeses when you're doing the charity work that I do in the community from the hood. It's like, free tuition. I know, correct, right. mm-hmm. correct. I, I'm not a superstar. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I don't have like a, a company standing behind me with a blank check saying, hey, whatever you need to do, Charlotte, whatever you need to do, mm-hmm. yeah, I got you. Like, I got to get out here and roll up my sleeves and... Um, be the founder of the school, be the president of the board, be the chief fundraiser. Like, these are my responsibilities. People but you are a superstar, though. Yeah. Uh, right. But I know, uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah, you are a superstar. There's not too many people that are culturally as relevant as you and the rest of the Fab Five are. Thank right? you. I nah. appreciate that. And so what happens when somebody like Latifah acknowledges the work that I'm doing mm-hmm. in Variety Magazine, that now takes it 
just like the HBO Real Sports interview takes it to an audience that sometimes I don't see or hear. Right. And may be that game changing donor because right now I'm trying to raise ten million dollars for our school. Well, let's mm -hmm. yeah, let's make sure we talk about how can people donate. Yeah. How can people donate? J R L A Detroit. I mean, if you really want, I give. I put my phone number on here. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't put your phone I'm the chief fundraiser, but it, but in all honesty, like. <laughs> Um, it's been a labor of love. We're open enrollment. We're tuition free. We're public charter. But here's the number one thing I want people to take away from the school that I founded. That's a game changer for the black community and the brown community. The job ain't done after high school. So what has happened in the United States of America, we get out of school in June and go back in September. Or mm -hmm. We get our young people out in sept uh, senior year and they throw their hats in the air. You can't even get a job at McDonald's with a high school diploma. The job ain't done. So what I established a nine through 16 model, where when you graduate from high school, those 13 through 16 years, we're still there to support you. Community college, college or university, trade school, military, you wanna go to barber school, you wanna wherever mm -hmm. you wanna do, mm -hmm. we're still there to support your life, your career, to put you in position to have a job, have a career, and change the dynamics of your family, along with being educated. So. That's the thing that I'm most proud of. Well, we got more with Jalen Rose. Don't go anywhere. Keep it locked right there. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. We still have Jalen Rose in the building. Charlemagne? I, I saw you talking about the uh, the TV athlete wage gap. What, what was that? So <laughs> I'm really fortunate that I've tried to be, and I'll just say this all out, like the most complete former athlete to ever do this. So... Right now, I write a column. New York Post. New York Post. Mm -hmm. I DJ Saturday, 1 p.m. on Amp Radio. I do Jalen and Jacoby podcast and television show Monday through Friday. You'll see me featured on ABC and ESPN doing uh, NBA countdown on the big stage. Christmas Day, NBA Finals, NBA Draft. Those are the biggest stages in basketball. Mm -hmm. But what ends up happening to the athlete, and this is a barrier, this is a glass ceiling that I'm trying to break, is that 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 we don't get looked at as like rinse and repeat. Like when you guys go to negotiate for this show or when athletes have an opportunity, we don't look at it like, well, we could just replace one of y'all. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like we built this together and we're going to find a way to keep it moving together. It's not like, hey, you know, and, 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 and but but working in sports, what ends up happening is the athlete gets looked at as turnkey. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, we got you for a couple of years. We got you for a couple of, oh, who's next? Mm -hmm. In particular, the black athlete. Mm. Like, who's next? Like, oh, okay, you you was you was good. It, it's not that you're not as good at your job. It's just that they're trying to look for who's next. And then the the next thing to your question is, those said athletes are the experts as well. I'm not an athlete. One of the dumbest things I actually hear athletes say is, how you gonna talk about me, Charlemagne, but you didn't play in the league? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, that's just, I, I, I just cringe when I hear that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's like one of the dumbest things we could say. Why? Because you don't have to be a guy that played or a young lady that played to have a, an intelligent opinion about right. what you just saw. Correct. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. So if that's the case, that means women should never cover football. Mm-hmm. So that, that logic just doesn't make sense. But but I will say, in some instances, it does. Like correct. When, I, when I'm talking to you about you know the NBA and how different it was playing when when they foul harder, when it was this and the, and the NBA correct. changed, only somebody from the NBA can tell the difference of that. And Not really. You, yeah. I, I can see that. I, I, I saw the bad boy Pistons and the Knicks back in the 90s. Yeah, There's a he, difference. But he would know the effect more than anybody else of, of how it did if it caused injuries. Yeah. If it Correct. Had headaches, and so anything. you're yeah. answering his question for me. That means I'm valuable. Correct. Because the actual question that needs to get answered at some point, you're going to need to hear from somebody that did it. Right. Correct. I think both things are That's necessary. the value. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's why All the Smoke is so popular. I think that's why Inside the NBA with Shaq and Kenny and Chuck is so popular. Yep. You know, Jalen and Jacoby. Like, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, I like hearing people that did it talk about it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And the and the and here's the, what gets underrated. The players like to hear their voice being said mm -hmm. and heard. Mm -hmm. Like, it's funny. Sometimes when I put on an outfit to go do a show on ABC, I know 95% of the audience is going to be like, what is he wearing? Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> I do it anyway. And they're going to yeah. check your hairline. I, I, I do it anyway mm-hmm. because I'm trying to put on for our culture. Yeah. Correct. That's why you see me with a ball head. <laughs> you see me with 360 waves. Mm-hmm. You see me with a carrier bat. You see me all, do all of that. With a like, rose lapel. With a rose lapel, <laughs> wearing fear of God, mm-hmm. wearing rich, fresh, doing all of that. B- b- because I understand the value of me doing that. And I know probably it wasn't being done before me. Yeah. And it probably won't be done if I wasn't doing it. Right. So while I got the chance, that's the value that I think the former athlete has that makes them uh, a unique commodity. And I know I know the Fab Five paved the, paved the way for Allen Iverson. You know what I mean? I know I, I know I don't know if anybody's ever asked AI that, but I'm sure he got a lot of that confidence from watching y'all show up and be y'all unapologetically black hip hop self. No question. The first time I met AI. He ran up to me, tackled me. <laughs> like, I love you, Negro. <laughs> That's AI. I love you. That's what he, like, mm-hmm. he literally was like, thank you. Because, and, and this sounds stupid saying it. Like, don't it sound stupid that we used to talk about AI's tattoo? I, I, I thought like, it was dope. Like that, yeah. I know, but, but looking back in retrospect. I'm, back, I'm talking about yeah. society. Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Tattoos, yeah. Like, hair. Because right, it's so, so common now. Yeah. So, so he was in the league. To, to your point, we was in college. Yeah. It was like, you, 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 do you know how much you can be suppressed as a college athlete to the point where that stopped Jimmy and Ray, in my opinion, from truly getting opportunities in the league? If they wanted to keep, they tried to keep us all out the league. Wow. You see what I mean? Wow. So like, when, like I remember I had I had a boss tattoo. I still have it, obviously, duh. I got a tattoo on my chest to say uh, a Black Panther. And one time I was driving to the basket, somebody pulled my jersey. That was the article in the paper the Damn. next day. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. That, that was the art. And I had I had some fake cubic zirconian earrings. They just thought I was like scar facing it. <laughs> and so as a college kid, it's one thing. He graduated it because he was in the league and MVP doing it. Yeah, they made rules to, to, to stop So they was like, it. you know what? These guys out of college. We're going to close that door. Ain't going to be no more of that. But with him in the league, we're about to change all these rules. He got corn rolls. He got a 4XT. He, <laughs> he got three bracelets and two watches and yep. five chains. That's, cool. that's, that's, mm-hmm. what, that's how we was doing it then. Mm-hmm. Like, we was like, I know, I know when you see the athletes now, you guys feel like they was the first pe- people wearing like multiple jewels and Not stuff like all. that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm from Detroit. And shout, <laughs> and shout to the BMF, Big Meech, the OG, and Southwest T. Mm-hmm. Like, that make it rain stuff, you guys know, that's that's 313. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the MVP. We were having this conversation earlier. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right? Should the MVP be given after the season's over? No! <laughs> no! Why, why, why? Because you minimize the whole regular season. But what about yeah. the playoffs, though? Because it seems like there's a regular season MVP, a finals MVP, but nothing that you do in the playoffs factors in? You just, there's a regular season MVP, mm-hmm. and then you just said it. There's a finals MVP. But what about the playoffs? First, second, the, the third The finals round? MVP is the playoff MVP. Right. If you so they consider the... the first, second, and third round when they factor in the MVP final? No, what I'm saying is like the regular season is the first 82 games. Okay. You have to. You have to create a reward for the players. You just we just talked about low management and mm-hmm. players showing up every night. You want them to play for six man, most improved, MVP, coach of the year, you defensive player of the year, rookie of the mm-hmm. year. Like you want them to show up and play for those awards. And then when that season ends, it's a new season. And then usually the pe- the the best performer in the playoffs, like last year, it was Giannis is the playoff slash finals MVP. Yeah. That does exist. I just feel like the, the the farther you take your team should factor in. It does. Giannis won finals MVP last year. Yeah. But you don't want, like, like Cornbread Maxwell, for you old basketball fans, played with the big three in Boston. Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, Robert Parrish. Mm-hmm. They won the championship. He had a great NBA finals. He was... The finals MVP mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because he had the best playoff, the best final. He ain't the regular season MVP though. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? And so that that's how you distinguish between the two. It's just watching Joker win it after seeing what Embiid not, Embiid not being there for the for the Heat series and then coming back for two games and then tying the series. Like Embiid should be the MVP. But this is what this is where we. Get, I'm a voter and I and I and, and, and I'm trying to tell you 
whatever whoever does in the playoffs has nothing to do with that regular season award. Damn. It's mm. a regular season award. You can't validate the award by saying, hey, you see such and such last night. I told you that's why I voted for him as six man. Like, that it's a regular season award. Who'd you vote for, Jalen? I voted for the Joker. Really? <laughs> I did. Wow. And it seems like I was it right. Out. <laughs> it seems like I was right. He had a milestone that had never gotten done. What 2,000 was it? points. Okay. 1,000 rebounds and 500 assists in the same season. Wow. Hmm. Like no no player has ever done that. Wow. No player. Tell us about that campaign again, man. Give them the website. And where can people donate if they want to donate? A couple of things. And don't give so, out your number. Okay, so <laughs> to learn more about the Jalen Rose Leadership Academy, please go to jrladetroit.com. We're open enrollment. We're tuition free. We're public charter. We're a 9 through 16 model. This is the actual charity that makes it to the hood, mm. literally. And your support, companies support, businesses support, it, it, it's paramount to changing lives. Again, I want to thank Vive in, uh, Health for having me here on behalf of the HIV awareness campaign. Mm -hmm. And again, when you look at the name of the, the, the advertisement, me and you and you and me, you're going to first giggle. Yeah. <laughs> right? You're going to first giggle. And that's the hurdle that we need to get over as black people. Real talk. All right. Well, we have Jalen Rose. Rose. Yes, indeed. I we love you guys. You appreciate you having us. me on. And you know, you can come up here anytime you Thank you, you Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. It's the Breakfast Club. Jalen Rose. Hey, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We I are love Breakfast that song. Club. Good but morning. It, it reminds me of I got into a car crash one time listening to it. So it always makes me think about that. Remember, this song was on really loud when oh, the accident damn. happened. But it's a great song still. Great. All right. It's well, let's, let's get to the rumors. <laughs> let's talk Ray J. This is the Rumor Report with Angela Yee. Rumor has it. Rumor, rumor, rumor. On the Breakfast Club. So listen up. Well, Ray J, in his interview with Daily Mail, talked about how he and Kim Kardashian would still be together if she didn't steal money from Brandy. He said, apart from them stealing money from my family, we would probably still be together now. But then that happened. I said, I don't want to be sleeping around with you no more. You stole money from my family. So that's why we stopped speaking. How did she steal money? Do we know? I heard that story somewhere. Yeah, they, they've talked about it uh, before. They actually sued Kim Kardashian and Khloe for allegedly charging over $120,000 in unauthorized purchases on their Amex card. And so those charges were to stock their clothing line Dash and smooch, and they did settle that outside of court. Hey man, Chloe and Kim said you got to start somewhere. <laughs> okay, <laughs> started as a scammer, now we here. They stole hundred and right. twenty thousand. <laughs> yes, they charged allegedly. They owe Brandy five minutes. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Can you date somebody still after they done stole from somebody in your family? No, you got to break up. If I can see the future and I see that their family gonna turn out to be billionaires, <laughs> I can forgive that from that small investment. <laughs> yeah, that's a little small investment. That's what that's how I would tell my sister Brandy. That was just an investment. Okay. You know how long ago that was too. That was. Um, Back in 2006 that that happened. All right. Now, uh, mm -mm -mm. Mark Lazary, who's the co-owner of the Milwaukee Bucks, he talks about some advice that he gave to Giannis Antetokounmpo on how to handle his money. And he told him not to have his money in several different banks. You know, Giannis talks about how he came from selling trinkets on the streets of Athens alongside his brothers to, of course, now... Uh, in the NBA being a huge star and getting used to living in the United States after having lived the way that he did in Greece prior to coming over here. So here is what Mark Lasby had to say about investing. Giannis had a great line. He was, he was at our house one day. He goes, where do you keep your money? I said, well, my money's at J.P. Morgan. Um, I go, where do you keep yours? He goes, oh, 50 different banks because you have, I do it up to the insured amount. And so I got to make sure my money's insured. And part of that is because he's from Greece. He was worried about banks going under. It's It actually was fascinating. Just, um, you know, I, you, you've got to spend time with them for them to understand all this. Right. So he said he well, what's spent the advice? a lot of time telling him where they should invest. Um, oh, he didn't tell us. Yeah, he told he he didn't tell us. But he said he shouldn't divide up his money into too many banks, and he gave him some advice after that. So. I wonder why he said that. I mean, a lot of people I know do that because banks only usually insure up to $250,000. Anything over that, they don't insure it. So a lot of people spread money around just in case there ever is a problem. Mm -hmm. 50 different banks. That's a lot to keep up with. 
Yes, yeah, accountants. All right, now Jack Harlow. Don't, don't sound like it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this like was he, early yeah. on. I mean, yeah, he came, true. Yeah, he came over on. when he was eighteen. So I'm sure, and he's from Greece. So mm-hmm. It's a whole different thing there. So I'm sure he needed some um, sound advice. All right, now Jack Harlow announced his "Come Home, the Kids Miss You" tour with the City Girls. Are y'all excited for that one? It kicks off um, September in Nashville, Tennessee, and it ends in Atlanta, Georgia. So. Uh, congratulations to them. That sounds like a really fun tour to go on. Okay. Mm-hmm. And Nori has announced who his new guest is going to be on Drink Champs. His next guest is going to be da, 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 ASAP Rocky. We do have a teaser. No, you thought no, you had a we don't? Okay. I feel like I thought, I don't know why I thought that interview came out already. Mm-mm, he just played a, a clip of it yeah, yesterday. It only... I guess because I, be, I talked to Nori. I guess he, I, he told me he interviewed. ASAP, mm-hmm. a while ago. Mm-hmm. All right, now Jesse Williams, nude footage from well, his Broadway. They, they have a clip of ASAP Rocky on the show if you want that. Yeah. All right. Travis Scott, stole what? the whole style. <laughs> yeah, from ASAP Rocky. Yeah. <laughs> that was him talking about Travis no, Scott. No, he asked for the clip of Nori of ASAP on Drink Champs and NB goes, well, we have the clip of ASAP on Nori's show if you want it. No. <laughs> <laughs> It just pulled up when she asked for it. No, I, I saw it on here. Oh, That's why I, I teased it. Okay. Yeah, no, it just came up. All right, now Jesse Williams, <laughs> his nude footage from his Broadway debut has leaked, and Twitter was going crazy over it. Grey's Anatomy. Charlemagne sent it to me yesterday. I don't even know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, Jesse Williams has talked about this to page six last month. He said he was terrified, but then I noted that that was what I asked God for. I asked to be terrified. I asked to do something that was scary and challenging and made me earn it. It made me feel alive and not comfortable. So there is nudity in this, some full frontal nudity. And well, why those re- pictures have leaked. Why are they saying it leaked when it's a Broadway play? Well, you're not supposed to take pictures at Broadway plays oh, at all, especially okay. when there's nudity. I've gone to Broadway plays before. I took my mom to go see mm-hmm. uh, Frank. Frankie and Johnny, and there's nudity in there, and they tell you you're not supposed to take pictures anyway. Gotcha. But they're very strict about taking pictures, especially when the actors are on stage and they're nude. You don't want to violate their privacy in mm. that space at all. I see people uh, excited about it, but the truth of the matter is that's a prosthetic. It's a play, people. It's a performance. You're hating. Why did you think so, it's a prosthetic? But it's still a prosthetic. You just, you just said I had you had no idea about it. Now you say so I, said I, saw people, I said I saw people excited so about, you know it. about it. You said you well, saw. I heard Envy and uh, Taylor talking about it literally five minutes before we went on air. Tamar Braxton tweeted out, "Okay, that wasn't that saved. I'm celibate, and the acne on my face looks like rocks. Just one touch, Lord. For sure, Jesse Williams has three legs, and one can for sure cure the acne on my face. Y'all believe anything y'all see online? Prosthetic. You are a hater. <laughs> okay. They say that he is was a prop. They say he's pushing." P, so I don't know. Yeah, pushing prosthetics. You <laughs> are a hater. <laughs> Ooh, all right. You well, hug? listen. Let me talk about things that I can relate to, like the fact that Vice put out a documentary yesterday. Uh, Vice Vice put out a documentary called "Men with Micro Penises." Tell us about life with a tiny penis. Okay. Well, talk to us. This came out yesterday. You, did you watch it? So, you I didn't watch. I, I read some of the. I read. I'm not gonna lie. These stories sound horrifying. <laughs> Listen, hold on. Let me read well, you let's one. come back with this. Hold on. This guy goes. I think part of it is men want their penis to be noticed, and if one has a very small penis, one could never believe someone who was telling them it was a big D. So the next best thing is to be small. That is Jack from Fort Worth, Texas. I don't believe that. <laughs> Sound like that's Leonard yeah. from South Carolina. <laughs> yeah, Leonard. Neil from the UK says, my penis has always been tiny since I can remember. It hasn't stopped growing, just never grew. Wow. True stories. Mm. Wow. Mm. Vice, salute to Vice. They put this out yesterday. Salute to. All right, well, mm-hmm. All right, well that is... Uh, Representing for the underdogs. Your good, rumor report. You're in good company now, brother. Yeah. All right, who are you giving me a donkey to? Story. It makes it easier for you, right? You. Envy, since so. you're the bottom. Yeah. What? Right? The bottom and of what? the top it makes it easier, right? <laughs> what are you when talking When I put that about? little USB in your butt? <laughs> what? <laughs> he has no problem walking after. <laughs> None whatsoever. <laughs> None whatsoever. He can run. He you can ride me? horses. <laughs> <Y'all> not... <laughs> Y'all not turn- no issues. <laughs> y'all, not, y'all not turning me gay today. I'm just telling y'all. y'all not... Turning? <laughs> You're not making me turning me you turn. <laughs> Who are you giving your doggy to, man? <laughs> Oh, man. For after the hour, Marcus Renard Hubbard, he needs to come to the front of the congregation. Uh, this is a prime example of why everybody don't need to be in jail, but we'll discuss. All right. We'll get to it next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. 
Angela Yee here for my friends at the General Insurance. Switch to the General and you could save over $500 on your car insurance. Call 800 General or visit thegeneral.com to find out more. The General Auto Insurance Services, Inc., an insurance agency, Nashville, Tennessee. Some restrictions apply. WWPRFM HD1 New York. An iHeartRadio station. Let me put a little bit of the Breakfast Club up in your lifestyle. DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. You are a donkey. <laughs> it's time for Donkey of the Day. Donkey of the Day does not discriminate. I might not have the song of the day, but I got the Donkey of the Day. So if you ever feel I need to be a donkey, man, <laughs> hit it with the heat. Yeah, it's a breakfast club, bitches. Who's Donkey of the Day today? Well, Donkey of the Day for Tuesday, May 10th, goes to a brother named Marcus Renard Hubbard, and he hails from the great town of Port Arthur, Texas. Drop one of Clues Bombs for Port Arthur, Texas. Land of the Trio. Okay, home to super solid black men like uh, Steven Jackson. Drop on the clues bomb for Steven Jackson. All the Smoke Podcast. And of course, the Underground Kings, UGK. Long live Pimp C. Salute to Professor Freeman, Bun B. Drop on the clues bombs for UGK, damn it. By the way, Bun, you have no idea how bad I want to try a Trill Burger. Okay? <laughs> I promise you, being that I'm a trans fat ass, I have thought about flying to Houston just to try me a damn Trill Burger. I have watched that video of my guys, Little Duval and Carlos Villa, trying that Trill Burger a million times. Duval don't even eat like that. Okay, he's a snacker. He don't he don't really eat food like that. I know that sounds Snack. strange, but it's true. Okay, but I asked him about Bun B's Trill Burger, and his exact words was, "Nah, it's good for real." Okay, do you want to know why I watch this video so much? Because I love how Bun B describes this burger. Just listen. Each patty is one eighth of a pound. So you put them together, you got a quarter pound burger. This I like. I don't like my burgers thick. I like them just like this. That's what we do. Damn. Mm-hmm. I ain't called nobody. Just grab the one. Let them know which one is what. What we got? Oh, All right, so the ones with the X is the onion burger. There's two patties with cheese with smothered onions, caramelized on the grill with the burger. This is the OG burger, two patties, uh, cheese, trill sauce, and pepper. Mm, 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 mm. I promise you I'm going to creek diet right now, but at some point this summer, I'm getting me one of them grilled onion OG trill burgers, double patties with trill sauce and pickles. Damn it! I done made myself hungry. Where was I? There you go. Oh, Marcus Renard Hubbard of Port Arthur, Texas. Uh, he's on the run from the Port Arthur Police Department right now. He is wanted for burglary of a home. Okay, this isn't speculation. This isn't allegedly. He was caught on home surveillance video. All right, look, man, inflation is sky high right now. I'm not excusing anyone for their actions when it comes to robbery, burglary, but there are a lot of reasons that folks are committing these kinds of crimes. Or maybe, maybe, maybe Marcus just got a drug habit. I don't know if he does or not, but I promise you when you hear why he's getting donkey of the day exactly, it sounds like crackhead behavior. Okay, if not full-blown crackhead behavior, crack-ish, which also could be a new ghetto American sitcom created by Kenya Barish, but it's not the burglary that's getting Marcus donkey of the day. It's what he was doing when he got caught. See, Marcus Renard Hubbard uh, burglarized somebody's home, according to the New York Post, and home surveillance video shows him taking a push lawnmower from the home, filling up the lawnmower with gas, then mowing the victim's lawn. Front and backyard, mind you. Now, I don't know how many of y'all had to cut grass back in the day. Let me rephrase. I don't know how many of y'all sold crack back in the day and got tired of cutting your grass, so you would supply fried cocaine by the 20-piece to individuals to do the job for you. If you have, then this scene may sound familiar. I'm not saying this brother is a crackhead. I don't know this brother to say that. I'm just telling you this situation looks and feels crackish. A new ghetto American sitcom created by Kenya Barris. Not only was Marcus cutting the grass, but when officers arrived at the home and chased him, he tried to run with the lawnmower. He was pulling the lawnmower behind him before he decided to lighten his load and ditch the push lawnmower in a nearby alley and escaped. Uh, what's that saying? Um, if it looks like a duck, swims like a duck, and quacks like a duck, then it's probably a crack-smoking duck. Once again, I'm not saying this man smokes rocks. I'm just saying this man's behavior looks and feels crackish. A new ghetto American sitcom created by Kenya Barris. Port Arthur Police! Listen, Marcus don't need to be in jail. Okay, Marcus needs potentially rehab, but more importantly, a job, some opportunity. Clearly, this man is down to work. He's not lazy at all. If you break into a house and you see a push lawnmower and your instincts say mow the front and backyard, drop one of Clues Bombs for you, okay? <laughs> all right? But you probably should start with that. 
Okay, you probably should lead with that, Marcus. Go to people's house at a reasonable time and ask them, hey, can I cut your grass? Just like the kids in the winter who pull up wanting to shovel your driveway here up north, down south when you see people's grass is high. Hey, give me the lawnmower and the gas and I'll cut your grass for the low. Okay, that's something Marcus could have led with. Then he wouldn't have had to break into people's houses. Okay, just think about that. Whatever he possibly thought he was going to get from the burglary, he could have probably got from cutting that person's grass. All right, this guy don't belong in anyone's jail. Come on. Port Arthur Police Department said, if you know Marcus's whereabouts, reach out to 409-983-8600. I think they should start to search at the Home Depot in Beaumont, Texas. Okay, it's about 30 minutes from Port Arthur. All right, that man is in front of the Home Depot right now looking for work. Guaranteed. OK, but this is a prime example of why everybody shouldn't be in jail. What is jail going to do for Marcus? Only reason Marcus is getting donkey today is because if you're going to go out of your way to break into somebody's house, then see a lawnmower and mow the yard, then start a lawn care service. Not a life of crime. Please give Marcus Renard Hubbard the sweet sounds of the Hamiltons. Oh, now you are the donkey mm. of the day. Thank you for that donkey of the day. <laughs> I'm going to be thinking about that crispy edge trail <laughs> burger all goddamn day. Mm. Do they got uh, veggie ones? Vegan ones? I have Like no impossible idea. burgers? We don't care about the impossible right now. Let me right see. Now. Trail burger. Mm. All right. All right. Well, I just come on, Bun B. Let's go. I maybe mean, like some bean burgers. All right. Well, let's let's open up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. Now, what were we were talking about, Ye? Oh, we were talking about... Jesse Williams in his Broadway debut. The nude footage has leaked from his scenes on Broadway. The uh, people are impressed. Okay. So what is the question? Would you film a nude scene? Yeah. Would you guys do that? Because like he said, he was terrified to do it. But then he said he asked to be terrified. I asked to do something that was scary and challenging and made me earn it. It made me feel alive and not comfortable. So would y'all do a nude scene? If they let me wear the prosthetic, they let nope. Jesse wear. If nope. it was an amazing scene. We'll do it. We'll, we, we'll talk about it when we come back. 800-585-1051. I know you wouldn't. I know you got small insecurities, but we'll talk about it. I don't have people. no insecurities. 800-585-1051. <laughs> okay. I don't even know what the hell you're talking about, sir. All right. So All right. would you film a nude scene? Call us up. Let's talk about it. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Pick up the phone, baby. Call 800 585 1051 to join into the discussion with the Breakfast Club. Let's talk about it. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, if you just join us, we're talking about what now, Yee? We're talking about Jesse Williams and his. Broadway debut has leaked and people are talking about the nude footage because he is nude in this. It's called Take Me Out. Now, by the way, I just want to point out that people were required to lock their phones out of respect and support for the actors. So this should not have happened. But a lot of people have things to say. Tamar Braxton tweeted out for sure. Jesse Williams has three legs and one can for sure cure the acne on my face. So the okay. question is 800-585-1051. Would you do a nude scene? Would you do one, ye? Uh, I don't think so. Because that's not really like my calling to be an actor or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So I don't if it was something that I was really passionate about. And like Jesse Williams said, he wanted to be terrified. He asked for something that was scary and challenging. He's been on Grey's Anatomy forever. Like, you know, he's a famous actor. So that's what he does. I don't know that that's what I need to do. Charlemagne. No, I have a family. I have no reason to be butt naked in front of anybody except my wife. Not knocking anybody who chooses to do it. I'm just telling you that I'm not. I have no, I have no reason or desire to. That's some acting stuff, though. Yeah. Like you know, actors like Jesse said, actors want to challenge themselves. You know what I mean? So they, mm -hmm. they like being in those uncomfortable, vulnerable, you know, positions. Yeah, no, I have no. I'd rather just get my prostate checked. You think what? if you guys had like What'd you say? colon cancer screen? You rather do what? I'd rather get my colon cancer screen. What does that have to do with? If I want to be vulnerable. Oh, 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 oh. I thought you want to do that on TV. Now, I thought you want to do that like, now. Why I was you like, want to yeah, do that on, on. Like, television? Right. <laughs> I, I, that's, I would probably do something like that on TV if it, if it helped other people um, go get <laughs> their colon cancer checked. Yeah, stuff like that makes sense. What if you guys good? were, like, impressive sure. down there? You think it would matter? If we what? We're impressive. 
What do you mean? Like if you <laughs> You know what that means. <laughs> She's saying <laughs> if you were if you were bigger, would you would you have you a problem? Well doing? My penis is seven inches oh and three fourths. Eight when it's warm line. out. <laughs> Few inches of girth. I think I'm okay. I'm not walking around with a Moscow mule or anything. Okay, but I'm fine uh, in that okay. department, uh, sir. All right, mini me. Hello, all right. Who's this? Short man. Yo. Bottom boy. <laughs> That's what you y'all. are. Bottom boy. We're talking to our listener. <laughs> pencil man. What's up, pencil man? <laughs> you should be happy I'm Yo, a pencil man. Well, no. Make it easier to stick in your... Hi, sir. How We're are you? The the line. Oh, 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 I thought you were talking to me. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm still here. I'm still here. Yo, um, yeah, yeah. I, I tried for years as a, as a teenager, like 17 through 25. I was trying to answer ads, all type of stuff for like porn. But uh, I'm short, black, and handsome. So, you know, light skin. It's not my fault. But, Are you uh, short, black, handsome, and light skin? <laughs> well, you know, light skin I mean, is black, you know, ass. Yeah, you short, black. beige, and handsome, bro. You Ooh, short, beige, and handsome. Nah, nah, nah. Envy's beige. I'm a little dark. Now, what does this have to do with you being nude? And, and why do they call you Pencil Man? That's my real name, man. Your real What's name that? is Pencil Man? Pencil Man. Yeah, Your penis yeah, look yeah, like yeah. a kindergarten pencil? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, chill with the pedophilia jokes. Um, <laughs> what? Charlamagne <laughs> thought Envy was trying to insult him. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, dead, dead ass. My, my birth name is dead Pencil Man. Um, I your birth name is not Pencil Man. Stop, stop lying. Call you Pencil stop man. lying. Nah, yo, yo. Why? Because you're the Pencil number two child? OG from OG Magnetic from, from Fort Greene, Brooklyn. His name is Pencil Man Jeffries. Put in work. Top shot, all that. He's in that book. Um, That's my pops, man. I'm named after him. Let me see. How you spell it? <laughs> oh, oh, it's exactly how it sounds. Oh, wow. You ain't lying. His, name is, his daddy's <laughs> name is Pencil Man Jeffries. <laughs> Yeah, he was held in a federal oh probe for gosh. heroin and cocaine dealing. All right, yeah, Pencil yeah. Man. So wait, is your first name Pencil Man or your first name Your daddy's 56, right? Your middle name Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, pencil Man is together. Yeah, it is. He ain't lying. Pencil Man Jeffrey. So, so you, 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 you PJJ. Yeah, yeah, I'm Junior. <laughs> All right, Pencil Man Junior. Lil Pencil. Yo, I love y'all, though, <laughs> man. Pencil. I'm a brilliant idiot. Shout, yo, shout out to um, Trent Black This and, and the Hezzy. Oh, you heard? Word. All right, Lil Pencil. Thank you, Lil Pencil. Man, I don't even know what the hell he was talking about. He was just interested. Eight hundred five eight five one zero five one. The question is: Would you, uh, would you act nude or perform nude? All right, that's the question. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Call me. Add your opinion to the Breakfast Club top. Come on. Eight hundred five eight five one zero five one. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're asking, would you perform nude? Hello, who's this? Hey, it's Tato. Hey, mama. Hey, Tato. Hey, how are y'all? How are Bless you? Bless black and highly favored. What's happening? <laughs> I'm good. I'm on Beltway, headed to work right now. You on what? Beltway. <laughs> oh. Would you act in nude if you had the opportunity yeah, to get a role? Would you perform nude? Um, yes, I would. Okay, no hesitation. Yeah, no, not at all. I mean, life's about the thrill, right? You don't even want to see what the the pay look like? You just, <laughs> she just whatever. What the role is? <laughs> she did it for free. I mean, the pay got to be the pay. It's got to be a little more, especially if you're going to be nude. <laughs> okay. okay. You wouldn't right, do, would you. you do like the bang bus or anything? Well, that's porn. Oh, oh well, yeah. I was like, we just going a different route now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay, thank just you, asking. Mama. Hello, who's this? Oh, this is your boy Leo, man. Leo, would you perform nude, bro? Hell yeah, I perform nude with the money right, man. It's all about the money these days, bruh. That's all it's about? You know y'all not getting paid a lot of money to do this, right? Uh, how you know that, Charlotte, man? You ain't Ga serious. Guaranteed you ain't getting paid. It. First, first of all, they don't even know you, Leo. Hey, Leo, why would I pay yeah, you a lot of money to be butt naked? I don't know you. What draw are you, Leo? Hey, ladies, y'all need any sipping paint models? Sipping paint? Sipping paint. <laughs> <What? laughs> If you think sipping paint models get paid a lot of money, boy, I got me, I got an arena in Brooklyn. I want to sell you he for the low. To, he just wants to be hey. naked. <laughs> yeah, man, it's so off, so off, man. You know, hey, y'all need a man. I'll hear me on Instagram. Thank Leo. Instead of an S, it's a five. You heard me? We got you a sipping me? paint model right, in the building. Yeah, all right, y'all. Hey, right, love y'all, man. Hello, who's this? Uh, it's Houston. Houston. Now, would you up? Uh, perform nude? Would, would you would you be in a play in nude? Would that bother you? Nah, that wouldn't bother me at all, man. I, I, I wouldn't mind at all. As long as they paying me enough, I'll be good. Boy, y'all got some, boy, y'all got some uh, rude awakenings about to come. Let me Google and see how much nude models get paid. Hello, who's this? 
This amazing tape in Miami. Man, what's up, bro? Would you perform nude, man? Well, you know, if that's part of my job, you know, you can't pick and choose what to do with your, with your actor. All and right. Say, well, oh. Yes, you can. You can say, no, I don't want to do this part. Nude. Hey, I just want to tell y'all that nude models make about $18 to $20 per hour. If they're lucky, that's exactly what it says. If they're well, lucky. Maybe you're a big break. You know, maybe somebody just talked about you and, you know, it's slow from being nude in a scene, you know? Okay. You Could be the big break. Yeah, you got to take opportunities when they come. You don't necessarily see it right away. But it's something that you can take advantage of if you have to do it. Yeah, right. remember the show Eyes on HBO? A lot of people did Eyes. There was a lot of yeah. nudity on and there. And nobody remember them butt-naked men in the background. Most of them guys butt-naked in the background in the shower. You don't remember <laughs> none of them people. $18 Obviously, an hour. you still remember them. I love Oz. Oz was a great show. I bet you do. <laughs> What's the moral of the story, guys? I don't know if there is a moral. Y'all looking for y'all big break, but y'all ain't even big. Y'all want to be butt naked for no goddamn reason. If you just want to be an exhibitionist, just say you want to be an exhibitionist. Don't look for an excuse to be naked. Go streaking. Now, that's how you make your mark. <laughs> Streak butt naked across the NBA playoffs. <laughs> All right. Next time jail. the Warriors Grizzlies play, just run butt naked across the floor. <laughs> I bet you you get famous. You'll go to jail. And I'm going to Human Resources after this because I just, uh, Angela E just texted me and it was a, a, a butt ass naked picture of Jesse Williams. What did I write? I didn't read. This is for reference, so you know what we're talking about here. Nope, I didn't need that. But now I'm going to send it to Charlemagne. Send All me right. what? You'll see. We got rumors on the way? Yes. There's nothing wrong with paying a woman's bills. We'll tell you who said that. All right. We'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get to the rumors. Let's talk Young Thug and Gunna Gunna. It's about time. What's going on? Rumor Report. Rumor Report. This is The Rumor Report. Talk to him. With Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. All right. Well, Young Thug and Gunna are among 28 people associated with YSL Young Stoner Life that have been charged in a 56-count indictment yesterday. Now, WSP, WSB TV's Michael Seiden has been giving us all the information on what's going on. He posted on Twitter, breaking... Uh, news. He said the 56 count grand jury indictment charges 28 members and associates of he called it Young Slime Life or YSL. I thought it was Young Stoner Life, but uh, the indictment includes charges of conspiring to violate the RICO Act, murder, armed robbery, participation in criminal street gang activity. And they said Young Thug is facing charges of participation in street gang activity and conspiring to violate the RICO Act. Gunna is facing one count of conspiring to violate RICO. There's an 88 page indictment, which he did read. And he gave some details um, about it, about the founders of YSL. They said Young Thug is accused of renting a 2014 Infiniti Q50 sedan from Hertz, which was used in the commission of the murder of Donovan Thomas Jr., a rival gang member. Prosecutors allege that two associates of YSL worked to get permission from Young Thug to make a second attempt to murder Wyatt and Lucci while he is jailed. So these are some of the very serious allegations that are going on right now. Here is what Young Thug's attorney had to say. I'll tell you the response to any allegation is Mr. Williams committed no crime whatsoever, and we will fight to my last drop of blood to clear him. Now, Young Thug was booked, uh, and so he will make his first appearance in court supposedly today at 11.30 a.m., but according to Michael Seiden, he feels like he's probably going to waive that appearance. Um, today, so we'll see what happens at 11.30. Like I said earlier, I really hate seeing things like this, man. Mm -hmm. Young black men, you know, with the opportunities to make millions of dollars, change people's lives, they should have their names nowhere near this kind of situation. And, you know, this is just going to... It's going to cost those brothers a lot of money and a lot of stress and, you know... Yeah, nobody wins really here but the but those attorneys. Those attorneys absolutely. make millions of dollars. But the sad thing is, is, you know, it's, you know, with a RICO, what, what's the probability of, of winning a RICO case? I have no idea, they said like, but it ain't good. They said like 3% or 5%, something very small that do people ever win Rico. So it's just sad because like you said, that that brother, you know. They was they was doing the right things out here. You know, right as far as, far as you know, like the, the, their music career is concerned, but mm -hmm. you know. Hey man, this is why Kendrick Lamar rightfully so made a mockery of what we call culture in the heart part five. And I'll be very interested to see if, um, you know, the label 300 is going to stand by them. They signed the 300, right? Yes. Wait, remember they just sold 300. 
But I'm saying they still signed to it, right? Yeah, they sold. And the only reason I asked that is because you know these artists make music based off the same things that those brothers got picked up for, and these mm -hmm. labels make money based off the same things those brothers got picked up for. So I just want to see what happens now that things are real and not just on records. Mm -hmm. Well, the alleged crimes took place from January 2013 to May 2022. All right, now, Juicy J was on Twitter, and he had a lot of people talking. He said, there is nothing wrong with paying a woman's bills. We got to stop this BS. Y'all tripping, you MF, go to the strip club, throw your weekly check, then be talking about, I'm not paying no bills. Man, stop it. I'm not telling you to do anything. That's your money you handing off, not mine. Trick on it. She's worth it. So, hey, I'm not mad at it. If a guy decides he wants to pay a woman's bills... Go right on ahead. There's nothing wrong with that decision. It ain't tricking if she's worth it. Like but I never, I never decide. even understood that mentality. Like if you are with somebody and that's what you choose to do for that person, why not? Mm -hmm. By the way, it's women that trick on men too. Mm -hmm. There's women that pay bills and yes, hold hold down their man as well. All right, now Travis Scott is going to be performing at the Billboard Music Awards, and they said it'll be his first televised performance in six months, and it'll be watched by millions of people around the world. You know, he did hit the stage in Miami over the weekend as part of the Miami Grand Prix weekend, so he is starting to do shows again after everything that happened at Astro World, um, and so you know that's going to be, I guess big for him to mm -hmm. after everything that happened to come back out again all right well i'm angela yee and that is your rumor report all right thank you miss yee all right now don't forget my car show of course july 9th in atlanta 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 definitely get your tickets we're gonna have a lot of fun you know last year we had a uh, twenty thousand people out there so definitely get your tickets celebrity cars exotic cars and all that and then of course june 19th father's day weekend i'm in houston perfect father's day give family fun uh, so many things to do so I want to see you at both of those events and my family will be coming out and hanging out with you guys as well alright but the People's Choice Mix is up next get your request in right now it's The Breakfast Club good morning The Breakfast Club your mornings will never be the same Angela Yee here for my friends at the General Insurance. Switch to the General and you could save over $500 on your car insurance. Call 800-GENERAL or visit thegeneral.com to find out more. The General Auto Insurance Services, Inc., an insurance agency in Nashville, Tennessee. Some restrictions apply. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got some special guests joining us this morning. We have the mayor of Newark, Ross Baraka, joining us. And I was going to say do it all. I almost I said do it all. can't help it. And we have Dupree <laughs> Kelly joining us as well. You got to say the name because that's who you want people to, to see when they go vote. Absolutely. You know what I mean? That's what I said. You got to put the accent on the E. D Dupree. Dupree, Dupree <laughs> Kelly. How are y'all this morning? Do it all. Right, good, right. good, 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 good. Good, Is it good. stressful around this time when it's election you know, season? It's always stressful. I'm used to it. But okay. uh, I, I think just being in the office period right now is just stressful. It's mm -hmm. just a stressful time. In, in America and being a mayor now is a very stressful uh, job. Mm, why? I mean, I'm sure yeah. why, but why? I mean, especially not, for in, in cities like Newark, uh, demographics like ours, black and brown cities mm -hmm. that are suffering so for so much. You know, you have COVID going on. You had the police violence incidents. A lot of cities were burning at the same time. Mm -hmm. Still have the regular issues that you uh, have to deal with. But uh, so it, it becomes stressful. I mean, being a mayor of New York right now is a stressful situation. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Same as everywhere. You know, you try to fight crime and police brutality at the same time. Mm -hmm. And also encourage people to go out and vote. That's uh, not an easy thing to do, too. It, it's not. You know, our, our folks, uh, especially, you know, they just don't trust government. They don't see uh, the the outcome of that. And 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 the, the best example is what's happening now in this whole pushback on against Roe versus Wade. Man. I mean, people were saying that mm -hmm. voting for Hillary would be like voting for Trump, but you can see that's not true, mm -hmm. right? So... The ramifications of voting for Donald Trump gave us those three Supreme Court justices that are now rolling back uh, what they called settled law. Uh, so it, it's going to have a detrimental effect if that happens. Mm -hmm. Now, what do we do about, you know, I see crime increasing everywhere now. Absolutely. Now, so what do we do to try to control some of that? It's difficult, and, and you have to deal with both sides. So you have to have kind of concentrated and focused deterrence on, on crime and violence. We know, like in most cities in America that have this issue, uh, that there's a small percentage of people that are causing 80 to 90 percent of the problems in the city. You have to really focus on who they are, uh, police-wise, and not this wide net just trying to arrest and beat everybody. That's when you get all these complaints. You're just focusing on on those issues and do real police work. Uh, and then on the flip side, you have to have like the social services, like we have the Office of Violence Prevention. You have to have all of those folks in there trying to do conflict resolution, targeting the same people, same families. Uh, because when somebody gets shot, it's a domino effect, mm -hmm. you know. 
targeting those families, uh, hospital-based intervention. You have to do all of those things on both sides of it. You can't do one without the other. And that's what people are doing, one without the other. So it's difficult to bring it down. All right. And Dupre Kelly, I'm saying your full name so when people <laughs> go to vote, they see that on the ballot. Right. You're also running for office. So can you tell you what you'll be represent? Can you tell us what you'll be representing? Um, so I'm running for the West Ward Councilman uh, on the mayor's team. And in the Newark, New Jersey, we have five wards. So I'm running for the West Ward where I grew up at, Red Man grew up at, Rod Digger, Queen Latifah. You know, it's going to be an honor to, to govern where I grew. As long as everybody get out there today and, and vote, you know, we're going to be able to bring the West Ward forward and continue to bring Newark forward. You know, so. How, how, does, how does being born and raised in the West Ward of Newark, you know, how's that going to help you with that role? Well, I think it helps me because I'm a son of Newark. Mm -hmm. I know those I know those streets. I know those avenues. You know, I, I came up in that ward. I was born in that ward. I, I went to school in that ward. I was part of the programming in that ward. And that's one of the reasons why I'm running for councilman as well, too, because I want to create some of the same and similar opportunities that I had growing up in that, that area that, that kept me out of trouble for the most part. Mm -hmm. You know, we had uh, a David Wright Association that, that had baseball and Ron Howard with the Optimist League and Senator Rice who had, you know, uh, football and, and Rufus Johnson. They kept me out of trouble. So I want to be that that factor in, in some of our youth you know, and create more opportunities. You know, it's a different day and time, so technology plays a part and, mm -hmm. and financial literacy plays a part. You know, once you create opportunities, then they're less likely to get into the troubles that they're getting into. Whenever people talk about Newark, they always want to start with, you know, the bad, right? And to me, I've always loved Newark. Like, Newark is a very special city. So I want to ask both of y'all, what makes Newark special? The people of the city, to me, makes mm -hmm. it special. Mm -hmm. I mean, the kind of love that folks have, the perseverance, uh, the commitment to each other, the community. It's like a family in the sense that, you know, we fight with each other, but if mm -hmm. somebody else say something about you, mm -hmm. you'd be like, wait a minute. Yeah, you, yeah, know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, so Newark has that. And, uh, you know, at the end, th those families, those old families, generations, we understand the issues that we have and, and we work hard to make sure we over overcome them, uh, which is what we've done for a long period of time. And I think now we're beginning to see real fruits right. uh, of our labor. For most, like what Charlemagne said, but sometimes when people hear about Newark, they hear about the, the bad things per se. But talk about some of the things that you do in Newark, right? And the reason I say that is I, I deal, I meet a lot of mayors, I meet a lot of governors, I meet a lot of councilmen. But the fact that you are so entrenched in Newark, right? So talk about some of the stuff that you do, with, whether it's uh, encouraging people and teaching people how to buy real estate, or it's talking to the brothers in jail, or having gang members uh, talk to brothers to try to stop beef that you hear about, or it's the turkey drives, or all the things that you've done that people don't know about. Talk about some of those things. Well, one, we we turned Section 8 home, uh, people who get Section 8 on vouchers, we made them homeowners. We, we took about eight of them. We got another eight coming that. We took their voucher and turned it into an opportunity for them to use their voucher to own a home in 15 years. We worked on making that happen. It's a model for the rest of the country. We continue to push it until HUD says, okay, let's do it, and, mm -hmm. and, and they want to see that happen. Today, we're going to make an announcement that we're taking 40 kids in a pilot there uh, that's between a 1.8 and 2.5 GPA, and we're paying a full ride to college, four right. years, uh, with the help of EOF, uh, and we're going to do the same with Rutgers and NJIT and all of these schools uh, as well. I mean, these are the kind of things we do, the guaranteed income, where we're we giving residents up to about $6,000 a year mm -hmm. uh, cash payments to spend on what they think is necessary uh, for themselves. So we're trying to uplift as many people as we can. And the same thing in terms of the men's meetings, uh, women's meetings that we have to encourage people to buy property, to get city contracts. We train them. So please explain what the men's meetings are, because I love what the men's meetings are, and I'm, I'm praying in the women's meetings as well that other mayors take that into consideration in, in mm. possibly what they're doing, because right. it's people from the neighborhood teaching people from the neighborhood. Right. We we. We, we have a monthly meeting. All the guys get together. Uh, I bring people there that, that are businessmen. Uh, the last meeting, we had a guy who owns 15 Papa John's, mm -hmm. a black dude from the city of Newark, born and raised in the city of Newark. And that's important so the people in the audience can see he's from my neighborhood, from right. Georgia King Village. Absolutely. So they have these excuses about the hopelessness that people have. Oh, I can't do this. This is not for me. Well, this guy's from your neighbor. He lived right next mm -hmm. to you. He got 15 Papa John's. Like It's time for you to step up. And so those are the kind of things that we talk about, even when we was changing the lead service lines, right? We had, we put $120 million uh, into that even more. 
I brought some of the contractors to the meeting and told them, look, God got up and said, I have a $40 million contract. The mayor is making us find local black and brown subcontractors to be involved. I need some, right? So a couple of people took advantage of that, right? Uh, we were able to give, unfortunately, about 4 or $5 million out. I mean, a couple of people made became millionaires as a result of right. that. But we should have been able to do more, right. a lot more, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and, that, and that we have to get ourselves ready for that. And some of those guys are now going on to other projects because New Jersey has 400,000 land service lines. We changed 23,000. So now they're primes. One of the guys that was a sub on a contract in Newark is not a prime in Trenton. That's He's dope. got a $7 million contract on his own. And he wouldn't be able to do that unless we helped him. And we gave him the upfront capital. Mm. to be able to take care of his balance sheet, to buy the equipment, right? And then we knew he was going to get our money back because out of the contract, what we did, and this is a Mary and Barry playbook that I stole this mm -hmm. part. Mm -hmm. uh, out of the contract, we made we took our money off the top, right? And so you got a $300,000 contract. We gave you a certain amount of money. We're going to take our money off the top, you know, monthly. That way you don't have any issues with, with paying us. You don't have to go to court. There's no <laughs> bank stuff. Right. And now your credit... It's better than it, than it was because now we taking our money off the top. You got to deal with whatever wow. else you got to deal with. I love Newark. Um, my son plays football in Newark. Yeah. Brick City Lions. That's right. Uh, I do roller skating in Newark. Mm -hmm. They, I think they have the best roller skating rink in the tri-state area. Brook, baby. If, if you've never been there, go down there. I had my wife's birthday party there. It's an amazing place to teach the kids how to roller skate. Yeah. So, um, and I eat in Newark. So shout to everybody out in Newark. And of course, I do clubs in Newark too. But, there you go. Mm -hmm. Definitely. But shout to Newark. And I appreciate you guys for joining us this morning. Hey, Thank hey, one thing I want to say, man, before we go, man, is everybody, this is a very, very important election. Make sure you come out today. You're voting the entire team, Baraka. You know, vote for your boy, Dupre Kelly, in that West Ward ballot C4 or 4C, however you want to say it. And uh, the mayor, A2, and the entire team, um, you know, and this gets a chance to make history for the culture of hip hop, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. You know, shout out to Sean Barrow, who who uh, became the first elected official worldwide. Yep. But I still get the opportunity to become the first platinum selling hip hop artist in the United States of America, become an elected official. So uh, it's big for the culture. It's not it's bigger than me, man. It's big mm -hmm. for our city. And, uh, you know, we we got a we got a job to do today, man. So get out there and vote for the entire team, Baraka. Yes, All right. Well, shout to Ross Baraka and Dupre Kelly for joining us this morning. Of course, he is running for mayor of Newark. So go out there and vote. Everybody out in uh, Newark, New Jersey, head out there and vote. And today, I want to shout out to my guy Nile Rogers. Uh, I mean, he is just an extraordinary person, part of the group Chic. He's been on The Breakfast Club before. Uh, he wrote and produced, like, We Are Family. I'm coming out for Diana Ross. Uh, Duran Duran's Notorious. He scored the Coming to America, the original. An amazing all-around person. But we have a press conference today announcing the Disco Oasis. It's an immersive musical and theatrical roller disco experience. It's going to be coming to Central Park's Woolman Rink. And that's going to be June 16th through October 1st. So I just want to make sure you guys are aware of that because y'all will all be invited to come out if you want to go to um, Central Park and be part of this roller skating experience so shout out to now rogers you'll hear more about it today all right well Charlemagne, you got a positive note i do man the positive note is simple man it comes from the healing guide man i love the uh healing guide instagram page you should follow them but they said when you're confident in what you bring to the table you don't have to chase and beg anyone to sit down and eat breakfast club bitches y'all finished or y'all done